this topic is of great importance uh, not only for the field of transfusion medicine but it has got uh, great many ramifications in management of uh, transfusion therapy in patients especially those who are uh, for solid transplant or for hematology oncological transplant centers and uh, in as far as uh, for for md course for pg for pg students a lot many uh, topics and can be asked out of this both in theory and practical viva and many other things and uh, so this i hope that everyone who is listening to this uh, make uh, consider this out utmost importance so um, the content of the present seminar would be divided as follows i would be discussing the clinical effects of leuco reduction so why do i need a leuco reduced blood product at my center uh, the standards of leuco reduction what does the indian regulation say about the leuco reduction the stand the levels of leuco reduction methods of leuco reduction how shall the process be performed in a blood center the need for leuco reduction in indian setting so will it be economical to my patient leuco reduction in blood transfusion services at tertiary care hemato oncological center i would be discussing a small about what we practice at homi baba cancer hospital varanasi and in the end i'll summarize my seminar and i'll take questions at the end so, considering with part 1 introduction the cellular blood products contain passenger leuco uh, leukocytes transfusion of passenger leukocytes may be associated with various adverse effects uh, as per rossi the risk associated with leukocytes are majorly classified into three the non hemolytic febrile transfusion reactions the hla alumination and platelet refractoriness and uh, transmission of leukotropic viruses such as cmv so coming to the leuco reduction in a transplant center so the term leuco reduction means removal by gross removal methods uh, and whereas the term leuco depletion means removal with the help of specific filters or devices now the hemato oncological patients become all immune to hla antigens during the course of their transfusion therapy and uh, the leukocyte reduction ameliorates the complications due to the recipient's exposure to these that is residual leukocytes uh, present in the cellular blood components the effects of passenger leukocytes in blood transfusions are referred to as uh, transfusion related immunomodulation are leukocytes the least cared about cells of blood so is it that uh, like while we are issuing the blood are they the one which are least cared about this is a distribution of infectivity in the blood components uh the component volume by volume the buffy coat contains only about 2% of the cellular component that we have of the percentage of component volume but then infectivity increases uh, to 35% if recovered and normalized uh, distribution for inf infectivity among the patients raised to 45% in which 70% of uh, infectivity is due to wbcs some are due to platelets plasma and very few are due to red blood cells so i'll talk about the clinical effects of leuco reduction so uh, this has been taken by a paper by bilgin at all uh, we will discuss about the studies of on cytomegalovirus infection studies on febrile non hemolytic transfusion reactions studies on transfusion related acute lung injury studies on platelet transfusion refractoriness studies on transfusion induced alumination on pre transplant blood transfusions on cancer recurrence studies on post transfusion infections and studies on mortality after surgery so i'll take each one of them uh, in subsequently so the host in immune response after cmv infection can be summarized by this uh, graph initially when the primary infection occurs the due to innate, uh, innate immunity uh, it is uh, the infection is fight, fought by innate immunity uh, uh, the cells like monocytes macrophages and nk cells and there is release of cytokines uh, subsequent to that after which uh, the adaptive immunity sets in in which uh, you have uh, activated t cells and activated nk cells along with b cells during which time the infection sets in a latent Uh, state in which the cells like myeloid progenitor cells monocytes and endothelial cells 
uh, acts as a latent reservoir of CMV uh, in the uh, patient. With time, if that same patient uh, happens to have some kind of uh, cancer and subsequently had having on immunosuppression or something, the same viruses get reactivated, and again the replication increases with time. So uh, these are like involved are CMV specific CD4 T cells and CMV specific CD8 T cells. Uh, which de reduces in number and sub subsequently the viral uh, replication uh, gets increased. So studies on CMV infection have said the fact is after infection CMV is latently present in MNC lifelong. So immune suppressive treatment, uh, immune suppressive treatment mediated control is lost. So hence it, the endogenous CMV replication happens and uh, which leads to CMV disease, which is many times life threatening in these uh, pre-transplant patients. So the question arises whether leukoreduction reduction and CMV seronegative donor selection equally safe. See the leukoreduction reduction is effective for prevention of CMV infection. There is no doubt about it. But whether the question arises whether it is equivalent to CMV seronegative donor selection or not. So the meta-analysis on BMT recipients, they have shown that CMV negative transfusions were associated with 58% more reduction in CMV risk compared with leukoreduced transfusions. So leukoreduction does not provide complete elimination of uh, CMV transmission. But the limitation is that a high community acquired CMV infection is seen in Indian population. So uh, getting a CMV negative uh, donation is a very, very challenging task. Uh, even in Western countries in US, uh, they consider both the methods equally safe, uh, as uh, said by Smith in 2010. In Even in Netherlands, European countries, the transplant patients receive only leukoreduced blood components. So uh, uh, this is how the practice in Bendix, uh, leukoreduction reduction definitely reduces the uh, infectivity of CMV infection in the recipient. Coming to the second uh, uh, complication that happens is the febrile non immunity transfusion reactions. Uh, very briefly, I'll discuss about the mechanism of fever in it. This slide has been taken from Rossi. So basically, what happens is uh, from the blood vessels, uh, uh, they, the release of prostaglandins and IL-1 beta uh, is they, it is uh, when they cross that blood vessel uh, membrane, then EP3 receptors. Uh, they respond in the fever after systemic immune challenge. So these lipopolysaccharides and cytokines such as prostaglandins, they are which are generated by macrophages, they further cross across the blood brain barrier and they inhibit the thermogenic systems in the hypothalamic paraventricular nuclei uh, along with the dorsomedial nuclei and the dorsolateral uh, nuclear uh, fist along with uh, raf felidus. So these uh, centrally acting uh, nuclei, which are thermogenic in nature, they get inhibited, uh, which led to the uh, cutaneous vasoconstriction and activation of the brown adipose tissue, which lead to raise in temperature. So this is the pathomechanism of uh, the fever in FNSTR. The fact remains that the leukocytes in transfused blood, which are destroyed by recipient antibodies, they generate pyrogens in vivo or pyrogenic cytokines such as IL-6, IL-8, TNF-alpha and IL-1-beta, which are released during storage. The second fact is this pre-transfusion storage duration is more important, more significant factor associated with FNSTR than leukocyte contamination. So the question now arises is, is universal reproduction recommended for the prevention of FNSTR? Two large randomized controlled trials, one done in uh, with the name VAT study, uh, done by Collier et al. in published in JAMA. And second one, very famous, a TRAP study, which looked into the platelet refractoriness along the, uh, uh, published in New England Medical Journal, did not find a decrease in FNSTR either by liquid reduction of red cells or liquid reduction of platelets. Uh, Another study by King et al. in 2004, uh, they have done a before and after universal reproduction retrospective studies in which they have found some reduced reduction in incidence of FNSTR. Uh, uh, but the platelet transfusions, uh, reduction of storage time is the more important factor, uh, made limitation factor in FNSTR and in other adverse events. Coming to the third um, 
study as uh, in as far as liquid reduction is concerned the trali transfusion related acute lung injury i'll very briefly uh, talk about the mechanism of trali uh, trali as we know it's, it's a basically two hit hypothesis two hit theory uh, where in the activation of neutrophils and subsequent release of toxic agents they harm the endothelium of the recipient and uh, most of the trallies happens due to the antibodies which are already present in the donor plasma so uh, binding of these hna and hla class 1 antibodies to neutrophils they cause direct activation of the cell and uh, these neutrophils can may also be activated indirectly when uh, hla class 1 antibodies are bound to the endothelium of the lung um, by along with these uh, antibody hla class 1 antibodies certain biological uh, uh, active substance biological response modifiers uh, such as cd40l uh, derived from the cellular blood products they are also thought to cause some uh, cases of trali so basically the potential multipliers are monocytes platelets and complements and the potential attenuators are t lymphocytes and red blood cells the incidence of trali is uh, one is to one around 1000 Uh, one case in 1000 transfusion to up to 5000 transfusions plasma containing uh, blood products uh, mechanism i have already discussed it's a two hit or multiple hit event in which endogenous neutrophil priming happens associated with the patient's underlying illness combined with biological response modifiers leukocyte reactive antibodies soluble factors such as cd40l accumulated which are accumulated during storage these result in the neutrophil induced pulmonary endothelial damage which further lead to the capillary uh, capillary leakage the question now arises is that is liquid reduction reduces the incidence of trali the answer is no because since it is primarily uh, based on substances which are present in the plasma and associated with the cellular blood products which are stored so uh, liquid reduction uh, removal of plasma or washing of the blood components before transfusion has been proposed in it coming to the fourth uh, thing uh, study which involves the platelet refractoriness in hemato oncological patients the mechanism which involves the hla alumination in against platelets is quite uh, simple to understand in which we have either i can either have direct alumination or indirect all uh, recognition in direct all recognition the donor and imprinting cells uh, they come and uh, attach themselves to the recipient cd4 plus cells and further they induce the formation of antibodies through recipient b cells in indirect allo recognition the donor platelets they themselves present to the recipient uh, antiplatelet cells which further process and uh, the cd4 t cells of the recipient are activated and further b cells are uh, uh, antibodies are produced via b cells uh, the refractoriness uh, the platelet transfusion response in a typical uh, typical patient in especially in a hemato oncological patient in which we have in general we find a intended response in around 65 to 85% of uh, patients who were transfused platelets um, a non immune refractoriness which is very uh, uh, more common than immune refractoriness is found in around 10 to 30% of cases primarily due to underlying febrile conditions etc and in very few cases in around 3 to 5% of cases we find immune refractoriness the important part of having immune refractoriness is the platelet uh, the increase or the, there is not much increment in platelet and within a hour or so the platelet get destroyed uh, in the recipient so the non immunological causes are more common than immunological cause as i have previously stated anti hla class 1 antibodies are directed against platelet class 1 antigens and the removal of these class 3 bearing white cells abolishes the class 1 immunization by platelets so the question is does liquid reduction reduces platelet refractoriness the answer is yes uh, a meta analysis concluded a 68% reduction of risk of platelet refractoriness by liquid reduced platelet transfusions and the trap study uh, also concluded that there is 74% reduction now there are seven, now currently several european and us studies have also shown that there is more than 85% of reduction of platelet refractoriness uh, with the use of uh, liquid reduction methods and leuco filters coming to the uh, another part uh, which involves uh, the leukocytes the red cell alumination 
on the left side you can see that uh, the red cell alloantibody prevalence is uh, increases from acute leukemia uh, to aplastic anemia to patients who receive uh, blood transfusion due to thalassemia major further myelodysplastic syndrome and sickle cell disease now important part is that uh, not only that the antibody prevalence is directly proportional to the number of transfusion uh, that the patient have so since the patient with uh, myelodysplastic syndrome thalassemia or sickle cell disease are uh, are would be more uh, their chances of getting more number of transfusion per patient per would be more so the chances of developing allo antibodies would be consequently would be more in these patients so uh, in there are various variable put, uh, which uh, which are put, which potentially impact the rbc organization there can be donor factors there can be factors associated with the unit rbc unit that we give for infusion or the recipient factors i would only highlight the few of them which involve the rbc unit factors uh, such as component modification such as leuco reduction irradiation storage lesions and micro particle formation during storage the red cell storage lesions and the platelet storage lesions uh, among the recipient factors the most important among all uh, such as degree of antigen mismatch hla type immune status demography general disease of the recipient or any other inflammatory condition that the patient may have among all these the most important is the rbc transfusion burden or the prior antigen exposure uh, such as prior transplant recipient prior a uh, pregnant uh, lady or such as these conditions so studies on transfusion induced alloination have uh, have stated the following fact that rbc carry very few hla class 1 antigens that's a fact but the question remains that the does allogenic leukocytes in rbc when transfused uh, does they enhance the alloination against rbc antigens the observational studies are not equivocal so it's it's we cannot say it's yes or no it's in the studies which have been done uh, such as the before and after universal reproduction studies that compare the buffy coat depleted rbc with the leuco filtered rbc they found no difference in rbc alloization uh, in their uh, by karpinski and the uh, shonwell uh, the randomized control trials uh, which compared again the uh, buffy coat depleted and leuco filtered rbc in cardiac surgery they observed similar incidence of hla and rbc antibodies in both the groups coming to the uh, uh, next uh, next topic which involves the leukocytes or transfusion related immunomodulation um, this figure is taken from rossi which uh, shows the uh, basic uh, treaties of uh, having the trim effect what are these uh, that increased rate of resected malignant malignancies increased rate of post operative uh, bacterial infections activation of endogenous cmv infections and increases the short term mortality these are all uh, pro being proposed by purportedly caused by uh, uh, agents such as soluble hla peptides which circulate among allogenic plasma soluble wbc derived mediators and allogenic mononuclear cells but whether the randomized controlled trials and meta analysis which are uh, which con whether they conclude that they cause trim remains to be seen and i will discuss them in subsequently also so it is again proposed that these trim effects are prevented by can be prevented by autologous transfusion uh, which does not happen in a patient who has cancer uh, the can be fresh autologous blood obtained by acute normovolumic uh, normovolumic hemodilution intraoperative blood recovery or post operative blood recovery pre storage wbd wbc reduction uh, may also uh, has been proposed to prevent trim effects and uh, allogenic mononuclear cells can be reduced using autologous transfusion pre storage wbd uh, wbc reduction and post storage wbc reduction also <clears throat> now the studies on pre transplantation blood transfusion uh, have raised this question that whether the pre transplantation allogenic blood transfusion reduces kidney graft rejection uh uh a better one year and a five year graft survival was seen uh, in severe rejection uh, when after transfusion compared with no transfusion in uh, sol solid organ transplant in kidney uh, like uh, compared 90% survival is seen uh, when patients who were 
transfused compared to 82% uh, graft survival and the fiber survival was again 79% uh, in those who got transfusion compared to those who didn't got transfusion 70% but there was no difference in the graft survival at one year and at five, five year uh, respectively in HLA-DR shared, HLA-DR mismatched and those patients who have got no transfusions. Here the unmodified 72 old, uh, year old RBC was transfused. So the studies are conflicting uh, in this respect. Uh, an evidence-based conclusion on graft tolerating effect of by pre-transplant allogenic leukocytes in blood products yet as yet to be is not possible as of now so uh, we don't we don't have a conclusion a conclusive answer to this question whether the pre transplantation allergenic blood transfusion whether it reduces graft rejection or not coming to the um, cancer recurrence so uh, it remains a fact that colorectal cancer is a weakly immunogenic tumor and the malignant cells in it can downregulate the HLA expression and co-stimulatory molecules allow the tumor cells to escape from immune attack. Now the question arises that does the does concern mucocyte uh, containing transfusions have a deleterious effect on cancer immune surveillance? So the answer is the various randomized controlled trials which are done on uh, colorectal cancer surgery. They compared the buffy coat depleted uh, PRBCs with the leuco, uh, leuco reduced RBCs. Uh, in which they have found that the local and the distant cancer recurrence was similar in both groups as a short term and at a five year follow up also. So although an immunosuppressive effect has never been shown uh, in other malignancies, it can still not be excluded. Uh, but as of now, uh, leukocyte reduction uh, does not have at least for colorectal cancer surgery, the studies which, which we have right now. Uh, it doesn't have any deleterious effect uh, in as far as uh, cancer recurrence is concerned. Coming to the post transfusion infections, the question is the, does leukocyte containing RBC transfusion uh, make patient more susceptible to infections during post operative period or does it have also immunosuppressive effect? So the answer to this question is uh, although transfused patients in colorectal cancer again the study is being done on this category between those who got leuco depleted or buffy coat de and buffy coat depleted prbc there were no differences in hospital stay and chance of infection but the patients who were given leuco depleted prbc they require less respiratory support now this is important although the uh, number of hospital stay and the infection as far as the infection is concerned there is no difference between leuco depleted and buffy coat depleted but since we know that the, uh, these leukocytes are also involved in the pathogenesis of uh, ALI. So the respiratory support is uh, less in these patients who are given liquid depleted products. Meta-analysis after that uh, published by Vemvacos, they found no association between leukoreduced reduced transfusions and post-operative infection. So the conclusion is the role of leukocyte containing RBCs on post-operative rectal infection is not proven. Coming on the studies on which are done on mortality after surgery, um, the question is whether does the leukocyte depleted PRBC better as far as mortality is concerned? The answer is the mortality due to multi-organ dysfunctional syndrome may happen after non leuco reduced transfusions in patients that undergo cardiac surgery. So in as far as the cardiac surgery is concerned, yes, leuco depleted PRBC are better. Uh, though the incidence of mods does not change uh, between the two. The second question is whether a leuco depleted PRBC better than buffy coat depleted PRBC as far as mortality is concerned. Uh, the answer is the buffy coat depleted PRBC when compared with either pre-storage or pre-transfusion bedside leuco filtered PRBCs, the mortality rate were not different. The leukocyte derived soluble mediators, they present in the, uh, which are present in the uh, bedside leuco depleted PRBC, they cause no more adverse effects than the pre storage leuco depleted PRBC. The mods, as a cause of death, they occur more often in patients who received uh, buffy coat depleted PRBCs. So, if at all uh, the chances of having mods, the answer is they are equivocal. But if at all the patient get mods, 
the patient who is getting uh, leukodepleted uh, PRBC would have less chance of uh, having an adverse outcome compared to who the person, the patient who is getting buffy coat depleted. The setting up of mods is not regulated by leukodeduction, reduction, but the consequence of the mods uh, may be regulated by uh, the leukocytes which are present in the blood product. So the conclusions are there is no adverse effect of leukocyte containing transfusions on short term mortality except the cardiac surgery. It is not the soluble mediators released by leukocytes during storage but rather the number of units transfused that entails the worse outcome. Comparison of long term mortality after transfusion of buffy coat depleted PRBC or liquid reduced PRBC in colorectal cancer surgery, they observed no difference in survival. And the long term effect of allogenic leukocytes in RBCs after cardiac surgery is not known. Coming to the cost effectiveness of leukodepletion, I will be uh, talking more again of this again uh, in, the, in the end of my seminar also. The analysis on the cost effectiveness of leukodepletion are scarce. The published data are scarce. Uh, the cost of leukodeduction reduction as on 2021 at Tata Memorial Center ranges from $0.6 to $5.6 and from $11.4 to $14.1. They depend upon the category of admission in which we get the patient here. The leukodeduced reduced whole blood, uh, whole blood was associated with reduced hospital cost than non leukodeduced reduced whole blood in colorectal surgery. Uh, this study was published in transfusion by Jensen et al. The leukodeduced reduced platelets were cost beneficial in AML and lymphoma. Uh, this was published by Bloomberg in 95 uh, and uh, leukodepleted PRBC were found was found to be more cost effective in cardiac surgery, especially in uh, coronary artery bypass surgeries and valvular heart surgeries. Um, another RCT found no clinical benefit, but also no increase in cost uh, associated with the universal liquid reduction. So conclusions from all the studies which I have shown up till now that for prevention of uh, transfusion transported CME infection, liquid reduction is more practical than selection of CME seronegative donors in Indian setting. Leukoreduced pack cells, uh, plate, leukoreduced plated concentrates, uh, which are single donor plated concentrates, they are significantly associated with lower HL antibody and lower refractoriness to RDPCs. Universal liquid reduction uh, for PRBC do not prevent HL antibodies and do not influence allomerization. Universal liquid reduction halves the incidence of FNSTR. But cytokines and chemokines, which are accumulated during storage of cellular blood products, are responsible for the residual incidence of uh, FNSTR and TRALI. TRIM has presumed negative effects on cancer immunosurveillance, post operative infections, or even aggravating the organ failure. But the randomized controlled trials revealed no support for liquid reduction except for in cardiac surgery, in as far as TRIM is concerned. But more studies are required in this. So uh, restriction of indications for leukoreduced PRBC and use of buffy coat depleted PRBC is a safe and economical option in as far as India is concerned. Coming to the part two of my presentation in which uh, leukoreduced blood components, uh, how in Indian setting we discuss indications for leukoreduced blood components, approximate leukocyte content of different blood components. Standards for liquid reduced blood components, the need for liquid reduction in India, what are the different modes of liquid leukocyte depletion, the different kinds of liquid reduction filters, the timing, the recommended strategies in for developing countries, what we do at Homi Baba Cancer Hospital Varanasi, and I'll summarize at the end. So just for a recap, a fast recap, these are the following indications for liquid reduced blood components, which are which have sequely for HL antibodies in CME transmission. Intrauterine transfusions, prematurely born infants, patients needing platelet transfusions, patient with or awaiting transplant, and patients who suffered twice from FNSTR. Uh, these are the indications where liquid reduced blood components are not required for the prevention of TAGVHD, for the prevention of TRALI, for the prevention of red cell or platelet storage lesions, and for prevention of viral reactivation.
so for these indications leukoreduction is not even even uh, recommended also uh, so comparing the leukofiltration with other potential technologies which are designed to reduce the risk of complications associated with leukocytes so uh, we can have gamma radiation in as far as the reduce rate of hla antibody formation is concerned only leuco depleted blood products and uv radiation helps in as far as reduction of leukotropic virus is concerned only chemical inactivation besides leuco filtration helps reduction of risk of uh, risk of uh, fnstr um, only leuco depletion helps uh, reduction uh, uh, reduce reduction of the risk of ta gvhd only gamma radiation helps so leuco depletion has unproven or uh, no effect on the risk of uh, ta gvhd the approximate leukocyte content per unit of uh, blood product is as follows uh, the fresh whole blood contains approximately 10 power 9 uh, leukocytes uh, per unit rbc con concentrates 8 our washed rbcs contain 10 to the power 7 uh, leukocytes degeneralized 6 to 7 uh, if you filter the rbcs then you will have uh, a, a power of 6 10 power is to power 6 uh, of uh, leukocytes after afrs is between 6 to 8 depending upon the technology used um the leukocyte reduced would would be having less than 10 to power 6 platelets uh which are uh, uh, which are which will be found in more than 95% of the units the standards for leuco reduced blood components is as follows as per american standards abb there need to be a less than 5 into 10 to power 6 leukocytes per unit which and uh, equals to 99.9% reduction three log reduction and further minimum 85% of red cell recovery should be there in 95% of the units uh, european standards again have 10 to the power 6 leukocytes per unit um, uh, uh, slightly more stricter criteria uh, the indian standards as per the gsr 166e uh, recently uh, which came last year in march they have said that when intended to prevent febrile reaction the level should be less than 10 to the power 8 leuco depleted unit and when intended to prevent allomalization or cme infection the leukocyte should be less than 10 to the power 6 per leuco filtered unit now this has come uh, previously it was not there in dnc act now it has come there uh, very clearly so this is the notification of the of dnc and amendment the 166 e which came on 11th of march under schedule f part 12 b section 3 uh, processing of blood components subhead e uh, you will now find the mention of uh, leuco depleted prbc in it in under para a clause 1 and there is a mention of leuco depleted platelet concentrates also under para c clause 2 and sub clause 5 so accordingly as per now statutory requirement the blood center shall have the license to process and issue leuco depleted cellular blood products uh, after the release of this uh, notification now the need for leuco reduction in india this has been very beautifully uh, reviewed by a paper by uh, uh, rr sharma sir and madam marwa in the in 2010 in which they have stated that india since had a rapidly growing number of hematological oncological patients they require different types of blood component support a majority of them become autoimmune to various red blood cells platelets hla antigens during the course of their transfusion therapy uh, which leads to various immunological complications and problems which we have summarized before also and the uh, transfusion of leuco reduced blood components assume a lot of significance in these hemato onc patients so what are the different modes of leukocyte depletion uh, the leuco depletion by the use of leuco filter was first introduced in 1972 using uh, cellulose acetate uh, filters um, uh, currently we are using leuco reduction filters by using third generation uh, leuco filters and uh, leuco filtration a uh, leuco reduction by the use of afrsis devices which uh, both of them gives uh, uh, approximately 10 to the power 8 to the power 6 wbcs per unit uh the centrifugation buffy coat removal uh, gives a product which contains 10 to the power 8 wbcs per unit washing gives 10 to the power 7 wbcs and if you froze and degeneralize this will give you 
approximately 10 to power 6 to 10 to power 7 which entails 2 to 3 log reduction so for efficient leak reduction and to meet accepted standards leukocyte filters and leukocytophoresis devices are the best <clears throat> so uh, why filtration is a preferred method for effective leukodepletion most commonly used method which is clinically effective close process um, there is a minimal red cell blast loss maximum leukocyte depletion up to log four reduction now we can achieve with the introduction of adhesion filters and favors the shelf life the shelf life doesn't change when we use these leuco filters now that's a that's a very advantageous thing so very briefly initially first generation filters were there which are called standard filters second generation filters were then again used subsequently which were called micro aggregate filters and now currently we are using the third and fourth generation filters the addition filters uh, which are also called adsorption filters so the mechanism involves for these uh, filters uh, for these third and fourth generation filters involves blocking of the leukocytes bridging interception between the two and addition between the mesh the major mechanism involves two things cell sieving and cell addition so basically if the particle size is more than 30 micron then it uh, the cell sieving happens just like uh, a chhani uh, in which it depends upon the pore size the branching effect and the margination effects of the particle and addition happens when the particle size is less than one micron so which depends upon the surface chemistry, surface charge, which is most important thing, the charge, wettability, microstructure, morphology of the cell, complement activation, absorption, platelet addition and composition of the blood. So currently we are having two kinds of filters uh, in it, the depth filter and the screen filters. Uh, uh, the depth filters are basically composed of wool fibers which are arranged in irregular fashion and the screen filters which are also called weaven type. The fibers are arranged in multiple layers in a regular fashion. So the mechanism of current generation leukocyte removal happens due to charge weight addition of negatively charged leukocytes to the filter material. Now since the addition is an active process, the advantage is the even we can have a large pore size and a higher flow rate is possible with lesser chance of having uh, uh, red cell, uh, uh, let's say uh, lesion, so membrane uh, lesions. Uh, at the same time, having an efficient method of removing removing all the leukocytes by modifying the surface charge of the filters and by coating like sub coating like with the methacrylate polymers, uh, which create a stronger positive charge and which increases the efficiency of the filter. The leukoreduction filters are affected by uh, the performance of leukoreduction filters are affected by many things. Uh, capacity of the filter, input temperature, input number of leukocytes, the temperature, which is the most important factor, presence of hemoglobin S, number and function of platelets, holding time between blood collection and filtration, and the plasma content of the uh, cell suspension. Besides that, it also depends upon whether it's a non-movement type and the mass of the fibers uh, which are which is present, the efficiency and the uh, remove and removal capability. Uh, sometimes are inversely proportional when we use only the first and second generation filters. But with fourth generation and third generation filters, we can have uh, a better removal of leukocytes with without compromising on the pore size. The timing. Now the timing for leukofiltration becomes very important uh, for our blood centers. We can have either pre-storage uh, leukoreduction or we can have a post-storage leukoreduction. The advantages of pre-storage leukoreduction are it eliminates the uh, scope of inflammatory cytokines that may form during the storage time. Uh, the, it also minimizes the risk of HLA alumination in multi-transfuse patients. Uh, what happens is that with storage, the leukocyte get fragmented and they can pass through the filter and alumnize the recipient. It also minimizes the risk of leukotropic virus transmission uh, with after 72 hours of storage, leukocyte disintegrate. So there is a chance that these viruses can uh, suspend themselves in the plasma and which can uh, again escape leukofilter. Fourthly, it is easier to perform leukocyte quality control in lab rather than by patient's bedside. Now coming to the advantage of universal pre-storage leukoreduction. So it eliminates the risk of incorrect blood component transfusion. 
uh, and it is very the inventory management becomes very easy. The disadvantage of universal pre storage is significant cost is involved uh, and removes the physician's discretion. Uh, the the uh, physician may have opinion about uh, the indication and the kind of patient that he is treated whether he really wants uh, liquid reduc reduced uh, blood product or not. And availability of units is adversely affected if uh, the supply and uh, stock situation of liquid reduction filters are not there. So, um, what what is proposed is after this is we can have a selective pre storage liquid reduction. Uh, but again, the selective free storage uh, liquid reduction can have an inventory management issues, uh, such as you, such as in a hematon patient uh, center, you can never predict how many of the patients who are admitted would be really requiring uh, liquid reduced blood components. So inventory becomes an issue. The second option is we can have a selective bed cell liquid reduction, but all the advantages which we get through pre storage liquid reduction goes with that. Uh, we all know that it is not as effective as, as uh, pre storage liquid reduction in reducing the leukocytes adverse effects. So uh, the consensus is in favor of pre storage liquid reduction. And the, but the policy of universal liquid reduction cannot be adopted in Indian setting. So what we what is usually followed is selective bed cell liquid reduction. Uh, my take is to take uh, my, my take on this is uh, to have a pre storage liquid reduction. Uh, with an efficient uh, inventory management. Uh, that is uh, my take on this. Uh, the process control of liquid reduced components also becomes an important issue. Uh, this is to achieve an expected clinical benefits of uh, liquid reduced blood products. Uh, they shall, after liquid reduction, the blood products shall retain adequate amount of therapeutic blood cells. That's the whole idea. Uh, the BCHH guidelines for statistical process control of liquid reduced blood components is published in Transform Medicine uh, 98. Uh, very briefly, enumeration of residual WBCs in uh, liquid reduced blood components is a challenging task. So traditionally what happens is the automatic cell counters, they do not give an accurate results when the count is less than 100. So uh, the proposed and the most practical method that we can do for uh, enumeration of leukocyte is the Nijors counting uh, ch uh, chamber counting technique uh, in a blood center setting. I'll just give you a brief uh, brief uh, look at what are the different methods that we can uh, which, which are available for leukocyte counting. So we can see that uh, the Nijors method uh, has a limitation of 0.1. So uh, it, it can detect leukocytes uh, in a in a uh, reduced framework of 10 to the risk power 5 even, uh, which is uh, 10 times less uh, of the standard that we intend to get uh, in a uh, liquid reduced blood product. Besides Nijord's more sensitive method can be used such as flow cytometry, but they are only for only for research purposes or some if we plan some studies or something. Uh, the Coulter method, you can see that it can detect only uh, the power that it can detect only 10 to the raised to power 7. So Coulter can be enough if we need to uh, enumerate leukocytes in a product which is Buffy code reduced, such as uh, let's say around for Buffy code reduced uh, PRBC like that. So the recommended strategy for developing countries is as follows. So we mod the modification should be uh, uh, should be as follows adopting a buffy code method of component preparation in which we can achieve a log bar reduction and which can also minimize fnstr use of top and bottom bags with the help of automated component extractors the limitation is obviously cannot prevent hla alumination and cme transmission with this method but it's quite economical and can be done uh, uh, now on not only that now since in since last year 2020 uh, the Drugs and Cosmetics Act also recommend uh, this buffy code method as a preferred method for uh, achieving 10 raised to power 8 uh, reduction. Uh, selective pre-storage leukofiltration for patients on regular transfusion. This can this can be applied for those centers which are dedicated hematoong centers, uh, where uh, the input and output of the patient, the in, input means the admission rate and the output the output and the recovery rate of the patient is quite well defined. And a close coordination between uh, the hematology wing and the transplant wing should be there so that uh, besides 
this can be used for inventory management for a targeted pre storage uh, issue of liquid reduced uh, blood components uh, of course it requires a lot of skill inventory management uh, besides that the plated concentrates can be pooled and liquid filtered uh, again this can achieve a log 3 4 reduction and uh, the uh, dedicated technical manpower is required for this uh, to achieve this kind of uh, uh, liquid reduction the second method second recommended method uh, can be harvesting blood components through afrsis technology uh, we we have seen that uh, beside liquid filtration another very good method of uh, achieving liquid reduction is use of afrsis devices so say for example instead of giving rdps we can always go for the afrsis derived platelet concentrates especially for uh, our hematology oncological patients that right now we are doing we we try to 90% of our transfusion that happens in in uh, hbch varanasi uh, it happens using the liquid reduced uh, platelet products which are derived from afrsis we very rarely use uh, rdps here uh, which is beneficial to the patients in as far as refract uh, the those who are particularly refractory to platelet transfusions uh, those uh, who have hla matched donor with them they can also be used for harvesting but the cost of the consumables becomes a limiting factor in this so at tata varanasi the afrsis sdp processing charge uh, ranges from 8 dollar to 80 dollar and uh, from 245 dollar to 306 dollar depending upon the category of the patient that we have uh, so very briefly um, what we do in homeopathy cancer hospital is uh, we use top and bottom bags using um, buffy coat the depleted prbcs and uh, we use the afrsis plated concentrates for all adult and pediatric patients with the hematolymphoid malignancies leuco filtered prbcs are issued to targeted patient population uh, admitted primarily in the bmt unit so uh, the the plan is uh, to also get the license for it and uh, very uh, very soon we would be having a dedicated bmt uh, in our hospital so uh, we would be giving the leuco filtered blood to these patients uh we do quality control for all the frsd derived products and of course the 1% of all buffy co derived products uh the indications for leuco filtered blood products are all closely monitored with the hematology team and uh, we also have an active hemogenesis program in as far as looking after the uh, adverse effects which may happen in these patients especially those hemat patients which are further admitted in icus to summarize liquid reduction is an associated with reduced risk of some clinical conditions evidence based criteria for instituting universal liquid reduction for all kinds of patients are not strong liquid reduction rates uh, liquid reduction decreases the rate of fnstr it's a level 1 evidence reduces cmv transmission again level 1 evidence and is associated with reduced risk of platelet refractoriness with regard to enhancement of tumor growth the evidence is incomplete the evidence for reduced incidence of post operative infection and multi organ dysfunction is weak the cost involved in universal liquid reduction uh, pre storage kind is immense in our country so it is not practically feasible to have it um and finally this is the summary table of having various kinds of uh, methods which we can have inside a uh, inside a blood center in which um, a simple centrifugation can uh, reduce the wbc removal of to the tune of 70 to 80% followed by washed rbcs spin cool filtration uh, no longer yet used bedside filtration pre storage filtration 99.7 to 99.9% removal of wbcs and finally the frozen and thawed uh, prbc which can be uh, method can be used for uh, liquid reduction so uh, with this uh, i'll end my seminar but with a postscript uh, especially for uh, pg students that uh, this topic of liquid reduction has both theoretical and practical importance so uh, you should be very uh, cause uh, not i would not say the like you should be very uh, take lot of importance to this topic a uh, long answer type questions may be asked regarding the clinical indications of liquid reduction a long question can be asked regarding the trim i still remember i got this question in my exam uh, the trim Uh, the short answer type uh, may be asked regarding the liquid reduced standards and other methods of liquid reduction 
uh, spotters can be placed in the practical exam in which different kind of filters can be put and you may be asked to uh, write two or one or two points describing the process mechanism intended use etc etc and the practical exercise regarding this topic can be given like for example you may be provided with a prbc dummy prbc and then you may be asked to duco filter it and the whole process control and the quality parameters need to be documented right from the maybe up to the time collection from starting of collection then doing component separation then again checking then process control and quality parameters or simply uh, back can be given in which pre and post you have to check the all the parameters in which leukocyte counting by nijors chamber becomes very important uh, the exact method of doing it uh, i i recommend that all uh, all you guys should uh, should be very thorough in the counting of leukocytes during your, for your md exams and viva voice can be taken regarding utility of universal leuco filtration in indian setting a whole range of questions may be asked regarding this the standards etc so with this um, I, i end my seminar um if there are any questions uh, please you may ask it